yeah so how do we know quantitatively the motion of a body one day a student of archimedes raised stand and he asked mr archimedes why if i throw a stone the stone is flying in the air falling on the ground and move to some distance and stopped why the leaves are flying in the air and after some time they are stopped and archimedes told that it is due to the nature of the body it is the nature of the stone that it has to stop after some time it is nature of the leaf it has to fly and stop after some time and this nature was presented by the god that's why the objects are working in that way behaving in that way see the answer by the archimedes that was the age the scientific knowledge not that much improved advanced they believed god and they taught everything related to god next the galileo age galileo was very interesting and very intelligent person and he has got a very inquiring mind he wanted to know that uh, the same thing why the objects are in motion why the object is flying or object is uh, what you what you call the uh, moving on the ground and stops for some time he did many experiments and he told that it is due to a property called inertia because of inertia bodies are in motion or because of inertia bodies are at rest so he framed the inertia but that inertia nobody can uh, experience nobody can quantitatively express quantitatively means they can't calculate then the next age newton was the first person for the first scientist actually he quantitatively expressed and told that uh, how this force can be measured so he framed a law and he is he the law says a body a body tends to be in motion or you can say uniform motion tends to be in uniform motion or at rest uniform motion or at rest until and unless an external force acts on it external force means unbalanced force so a body tends to be in motion or rest if the body is in state of rest it is in rest state only if the body is in motion it will be in the motion only until and unless you apply an external force act on it when you apply external force immediately change its state so that's how he expressed the first law and the strange thing is that before newton galileo also had given the same statement but only he excluded this thing he said a body tends to be in uh, uniform motion or rest that's it a body is in rest it is in state of rest a body is in motion state of motion that statement is given and he said that statement is inertia but isaac newton improvised the statement and he told that until or unless an external force acts on the body so this entire becomes a law which is called newton's first law so when we understand that newton's first law statement is improvised statement of uh, inertia we can say that newton's first law is also called law of inertia the body tends to be in state of rest or motion until the external force act on the body the statement is in first law but it's also improvised of uh, improvised statement of inertia so you can say it's law of inertia now coming to inertia what is inertia so inertia is relative to mass and we can say mass is the measurement 
of inertia. This statement is important to remember. Mass is the measurement of inertia. Means more the mass, more the inertia. Lesser the mass, lesser the inertia. Let me take an example. A big rock, a small stone are there. A big rock in front of you, a small stone are there. You are the top of the mountain. So, <coughs> you want to push the big rock. You want to push the small stone. If you just give a little push to the small stone, the small stone starts uh, sliding down, rolling down on the uh, mountain. But if you push this, if you apply the same pushing force on the uh, big rock, does it fall? No. Still you apply the force, still it is not falling. Because it has more mass, it has more inertia. So it wants to be in a state of rest. That's why it is not uh, moving. Suppose a car is moving very high speed, very, very high speed. This is in motion. Now suddenly car driver has seen something in front of the car, um, away from 100 meters away from his car and he applied the brakes. Do you think immediately car stops? No. It goes to some distance because inertia, because of inertia, it wants to be in motion. That's why still it is in motion. After some time it comes to stop. And the stopping distance, when you apply the brakes, the stopping distance it depends upon the mass. The car has more amount of mass. That's why it takes longer time. But if you see the same case of cycle, same 100 meters has seen something. If you apply the brakes, immediately the cycle stops because of less mass, less inertia. Car more mass, more inertia. So like that, mass is the measurement of inertia. Inertia is again classified into two types. One is inertia of rest. The second one, inertia of motion. Inertia of rest, inertia of motion. What is inertia of rest? I mean, body wants to be in the rest state. That is inertia of rest. See the example. There is a glass. On the glass is a cardboard. Above the cardboard is a coin. Many times you have done this experiment. If you pull the cardboard quickly, then what happens? Then stone also comes with you? No. Stone drops into the glass. Why? Because stone is in the rest state at this location and wants to be in the rest state. That's why when you pull the card quickly because of initial rest, it is the same state. But if nothing is there, so it falls into the glass. Initial of rest example. Okay. Now go to this one. Carpet having so many dusty particles and you want to remove the dust particles. You take a big stick and hit on the carpet. Then you can see the dust particles rises up. Why? In the shaft rest. Because they want to be in the rest state, but when hitting the ground, it rises up. When you pull, when you shake the tree, the fruits are falling from the tree. Why? In the shaft rest. They are in the rest state. They want to be in the rest state, but because of pushing, they are falling. Pushing and pulling. They are falling. So these are examples of in the shaft rest. Inertia of uh, rest. This is also inertia of rest. Coming to this fan, electrical fan. When you turn on the fan, switch on the fan, the fan blades are rotating and getting the air. And you want to stop the fan now. You switch it off. Do you see the blades are stopped immediately? No. Blades will still continue to move for some time. Because of inertia of motion, the city is in motion, still wants to be in motion. So, it is an example of inertia of motion. So, like that, we have many examples of rest and motion. Now, we will discuss about a peculiar example of inertia of rest and motion. That is a person in a bus, a person standing in a bus. See, this bus is a rest state. 
person is also resisted. Many times it happens to you also. You are standing in the bus, in the rest state, in the school bus. And bus driver suddenly stopped. Then what will happen to you? Will you be the same standing position? No. You will fall backward. As soon as you start the bus, you fall backward. Why it is happening like that? Let me explain. If you divide the person into two parts, lower part, lower part, and upper part. Lower part in contacting with the surface of the bus. So what are the bus state? The lower part of your body is also in the same state. If bus suddenly starts, your lower part suddenly starts and move forward. But upper part still in the same location. So that's why you feel backward pulling. This is happened because of inertia of rest. Inertia of rest. Now coming to here, this is another different behavior. You are in the bus, moving bus, and drive suddenly stopped. Then what happened to many times you have observed us? We fall forward. We fall forward. This is because of inertia of motion. So same thing I can explain to you. Lower part, upper part. Same explanation you can give. Lower part in contact with the body. So the lower part is also in motion. But as soon as the car stopped, sorry, the bus stopped, lower part of the your body stopped, but upper part still is in motion. That's the upper part moves in forward direction. You feel you're falling forward. So this is example of inertia of motion. So here, falling forward because of inertia of motion, it is falling backward because of inertia of rest. Let us discuss about Newton's second law. See on the board, two objects, a bullet and a block. Bullet has mass small m, block has mass capital M. And the small m is very much lesser than capital M. Now, when you fight the bullet, bullet moves with very, very high speed. Very, very high speed. The speed of the bullet is very high. This, uh, firing the bullet means applying the force. Because applying the force, small bullet moves with very high speed. Coming to the block, big block, big mass, you apply the same force, but it travels with a small velocity. So this was the observation by Isaac Newton. He understood that small masses moves with high speed, big masses low speed. Take your experience also, when you are on the signal point, red is showing, you are on the bike, you are on the bike and next to you there is a bus, both are in the, both are in the rest state, means engines are on but rest state, you are not moving. As soon as the red signal changes to green, when you rise up, who will go first, you on the bike or the bus, obviously you. Because your mass, including with the bike, is less. So you go with very high speed, whereas bus cannot go with high speed. Because a big mass, less velocity. So the observation, observe, observation with Isaac Newton, he confirmed that mass, mass is inversely proportional to velocity. More the mass, lesser the velocity. So m is inversely proportional to v. If you take v to the left hand side, this m v equal to constant. And he put the name as p. <coughs> p means momentum. So it is momentum. Momentum. So therefore, momentum p equal to mass into velocity. This was the first observation by Isaac Newton, momentum. So if you take the SI unit of momentum, mass is kg, velocity is meters per second. So it is kg meters per second. Okay. So how do you define momentum? It is a product of mass and velocity. That's the momentum. Let us do a small numerical on the momentum. So I'm, I'm uh, doing an example numerical here. 
Suppose a ball of mass 2 kg has thrown with velocity 0.5 meters per second. Then what is its momentum? So it's a direct formula P equal to mv, right? So mass is 0, 2 kg and velocity is 0 0.5. So this is 1 kg meters per second. That's the momentum. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.